Is your WordPress admin running slow? Does it take a long time to upload photos or install plugins? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you about 15 ways to speed up your admin. I do wanna point out that most people don't wanna hear about hosting. I'm gonna put that in the very end of this video just because I don't wanna spam you with affiliate recommendations. Just know that it is definitely the number one factor. Otherwise, I'll get right into the other stuff. If you're using W3 Total Cache, go into the general settings and disable object cache. This is a common issue people have when they enable it. It slows down the WordPress admin, so if you are using this plugin, then disable it. I generally wouldn't recommend using W3 Total Cache just because the settings are complicated to set up and it makes it easy to screw things up. I personally use WP Rocket, but if you're on a Lightspeed server, Lightspeed Cache is good too. Now you can deactivate your plugins one by one and see which ones slow down the admin, but you can also review my list of slow WordPress plugins that are commonly slow. I do wanna point out that Elementor and Divi are in here, and those are definitely heavy page builders. I would avoid running these page builders on shared hosting or WooCommerce, it's just a recipe for disaster, but I'll leave a link to this list in the video description. You can also use the Query Monitor plugin to find your slowest plugins. Just install Query Monitor and then go to any page on your website, hover over this tab and go to Queries and go to Queries by Component. And on the right side, you can filter by the time. So as you can see here, WP Schema Pro is my slowest plugin. And what I could do is since Rank Math also has schema options, I can actually import all the schema from this plugin into rank math so I'm, I can delete this eventually. I haven't done it yet just because I haven't had the time, but um, you know, consolidating plugins, obviously reducing the number of plugins, and more importantly, just using lightweight plugins is, you've heard it before, but it is very important. You also want to delete any unused themes on your website. So go to appearance, themes, and if you have a bunch of themes on your website, then you can delete them. Usually people leave a couple like 2011 or 2020 just for testing, but if you don't need these themes, then you can delete them. The WordPress Heartbeat API consumes server resources because it runs every 15 seconds in your dashboard and shows you real-time plugin notifications when other users are editing a post. So if you don't need that, you should disable it. You can either use WP Rocket or do it with a simple line of code or the Heartbeat Control plugin, Perf Matters also does it. But if you actually need this feature, then you should at least reduce it. And this will increase the interval from 15 seconds to two minutes. So it's not consuming as many server resources. And the other thing you can do is in your cache plugin, there's usually an option for the cache lifespan. Now, as you increase this, this will make the cache built less frequently and it will save you server resources because it doesn't need to build as frequently. If you publish content not so often, like me, maybe like a blog every week or so, then you can actually increase this to something like 24 days and that will save you server resources. But if you're running a news website or you need the cache built more frequently, then I would keep this as 10 days. Just know it's something you can do to help reduce CPU on your website. You also wanna make sure all your technology is updated. And what I mean by that is your PHP version, your MySQL version, and then in your WordPress dashboard, make sure your plugins, WordPress core, theme, and your framework, if you're using one, are all updated. I currently use PHP 7.4. PHP 8 is available, but there's a lot of compatibility issues with plugins. Just make sure that you're not using like a really old PHP version. And the other thing you can do in here is increase the memory limit. By default, uh, WooCommerce and WPML and a lot of other plugins require at least 128 megabytes, but you can actually increase this even more to something like 256 and then test your admin speed. If you're using a host that supports server level caching, I would definitely take advantage of those features. It can speed up both your website and admin. This is common with cloud hosting like Cloudways or Kingsta 
or even SiteGround and WP Engine all have server-side caching. In Cloudways, which is who I use, I have Memcache enabled as well as Redis, but I have Varnish disabled just because there's been reports of it slowing down websites. Disabling it sped up my website, so I left it disabled. Just make sure that you're using the server-side caching in your hosting account. A lot of cache plugins like WP Rocket have database cleanup built into their settings, but the problem with that is that while it lets you delete you know, a bunch of junk, it doesn't let you go through individual plugin tables and delete those. So you'll notice I'm using WP Optimize here, and it does basically everything in WP Rocket, but it also lets you go through your actual database tables and look at plugins that are installed, or that are not installed, but are still in your database. So whenever you install plugins and delete them and install and delete, then even though you deleted them, they're actually still in your database and they leave behind like pre-configured settings and all that. So what you wanna do is look for plugins that are not installed anymore and then remove them from your database. Obviously, it's always good to take a backup, but I would install WP Optimize once in a while and do a thorough cleaning of your database. If you're using module-based plugins, then you should disable everything that you're not using. For example, in Rank Math, I had Rank Math Analytics enabled, but if you look at my database, you can actually filter by the, the size. And the analytics that Rank Math collects is actually one of the biggest things in my database. I chose to disable it once I found that out, and I just use Google Search Console now. Make sure if you're using module-based plugins that you delete anything that you're not using. The next thing we want to do is limit post revisions and increase the autosave interval. I personally use perf matters for this, but you can also use a simple line of code if you just Google increase autosave interval WordPress or limit post revisions WordPress. You can do it with a simple line of code. You don't need perf matters, but I'm using it anyway for bloat removal and asset unloading, um, so I just use this. You don't need a ton of revisions. These are just backups of your old posts. Five is usually fine, or 10 or 15, but you don't. if you leave it as a default, it will accumulate in your database and make it bloated. And then the autosave interval is by default one minute. By increasing this, you are also saving server resources, which will speed up the admin. The next thing we're gonna do is protect the WP admin and login pages. If you install WordFence and look at your live traffic report, chances are you're gonna see a lot of spammy bots hitting your server. And even though they aren't logging in, this is consuming server resources on your website. You wanna block all these spammy bots from hitting your server. What you wanna do first is move your WordPress login page. And you can either use WPS Hide Login to move it to a custom URL, or you can use Perf Matters. Like I said, since I'm already using it, I can do it this way. But I moved my login to onlinemediamasters.com slash OMM. And just by moving the login, bots are usually not smart enough to follow it. It will prevent a lot of spammy bots from hitting your website. The other thing you can do is limit login attempts and make it so bots that keep on attempting to log in your website are blocked once they reach a certain number. And finally, you can actually set a page rule if you're using Cloudflare to protect the WP admin. Since I moved my WordPress login page to onlinemediamasters.com slash OMM, this is actually my login page. And here I set the security level to high, I bypass the cache since I don't want it running in the dashboard, and I also disabled performance features like rocket loader and other things from running in the dashboard, which I don't want. Cloudflare also has an option to block bad bots. You can find this in Firewall and go to the bots tab right here and go to bot fight mode and enable it. Cloudways hosting also has an option to block bad bots. If you're not using a CDN yet, I definitely would. Most people in Facebook groups recommend Cloudflare or Bunny CDN. Cloudflare is free, Bunny CDN is paid, but both are good. And the reason these are good for your admin is because it helps offload bandwidth to their data centers so all the bandwidth is not being consumed by your one origin server. 
You can see how much bandwidth you saved in the analytics and traffic tab. This is just in the last 24 hours, um, but if you're not using a CDN yet, I definitely would. Cloudflare requires changing name servers and Bunny CDN is set up through a CDN URL. Just use a CDN if it makes sense for your visitors. Now we're gonna actually remove bloat in your WordPress admin. And the first step you can do is go to the screen options right here and just disable everything that you don't need. And there we go. Nothing is loaded in the home page, which is fine for me. The other thing you can do is download the widget disable plugin. And this does exactly what it sounds like. It lets you disable widgets. If you don't use any of these, you can just disable them. You can also install the Disable WooCommerce Bloat plugin. This lets you disable all that WooCommerce bloat that they added since, I forgot which version, but they added a bunch of bloat in your admin, and this will help you disable it. It can also help you remove unused scripts and styles from non-e-commerce pages. If a plugin ever asks you to share anonymous data with them to help improve their plugin, I would personally disable it. I'm sorry developers, but it can result in a very slight performance decrease if you share your plugin data. I know it's very, very small, but I choose to disable all my sharing of data in my plugins just because of performance reasons. The next thing we're going to do is replace the WordPress cron with a real cron job. Now, this is usually specific to your host. Just Google replace WordPress cron with a real cron job, SiteGround or whoever you're using, and look at their instructions. So usually you will add a line of code into the WordPress config file. And then once you do that, you're going to go to the cron jobs tab in your hosting account and add something like this. Like I said, it's specific to your host, but this can also help speed up the app. The next thing you wanna do is log into your hosting account and check your CPU usage. If it's above 80% or you're exceeding CPU limits, then that is not good. You might get like 500 errors on your website or get an email from your hosting saying you're exceeding your limits, but this is very common on shared hosting and SiteGround. And if you find yourself exceeding CPU limits, then you can narrow down that you need to reduce CPU usage or you need to pick a hosting plan with more server resources. Whenever you sign up for a hosting plan, you're going to see your inodes and other server resources. Um, I don't promote Hostinger. I don't think they're a good company. I'm just using this as an example. But as you pay more, you get more server resources. You basically get what you pay for. And the same thing goes with cloud hosting. As you pay more, you get more RAM and core processors. So just make sure that you're using a hosting plan that has sufficient server resources for any high CPU plugins on your website like WooCommerce or Elementor and Divi. And I generally would not recommend running shared hosting with any heavy page builders or WooCommerce. If you're doing that, just go straight to cloud hosting. You should also check your GT metrics report to see if you have a slow time to first byte or if there's anything in the waterfall chart that's really slowing down your website. Last and not least, hosting. Now, all you probably know I'm an affiliate. I promote Cloudways, but honestly, I try to stay away from like shared hosting and SiteGround. Their time to first byte has gotten a lot slower if you look at Backlinko. And I would recommend joining the WordPress hosting Facebook group to get unbiased opinions because there's a lot of bad stuff out there on hosting. But I personally use Vulture High Frequency from Cloudways, and you saw my time to first byte is really good in GT Metrics. Um, my site loads super fast, so, you know, I know it's not an official speed test, but I mean, my, my site loads instantly, even if they have like 224 comments. It still loads instantly. This is the hosting I recommend. There's a lot of reports in Facebook groups of people migrating away from shared hosting and even SiteGround to Vulture High Frequency and not only improving their Core Web Vitals and GT Metrics scores, but also improving the admin speed. If your admin is slow and your time to first byte is slow, or if you're getting like those CPU limits on SiteGround or shared hosting, 
try out Vulture High Frequency. It starts at $13 a month, although I would recommend at least $26 if you can. And just, you know, click the High Frequency option. But this is the hosting plan I recommend. I will leave a link to this in the video description. It will be an affiliate link. And if you sign up with promo code OMM25, it gives you 25% off your first two months. So that's my whole spiel on hosting. I'll leave it at that. You can do whatever you want, but it is the number one speed factor. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or your admin is still slow, feel free to drop me a comment. Otherwise, peace out.